Hello again, everybody, and welcome back to Fujit's Blitz with me, Fujit. Hello. So today we're going to be looking at this tank, the Emil 1951. It's currently in the store, and you can get it two ways. We'll look at those in a minute. But ask yourself the question, why should you get this tank? I mean, there is a Tech Tree Emil free of charge already, the Emil 1. However, this one has got a couple of things up its sleeve that we're going to look at. But let's get into the store and see how you can get your paws on this one. So here we are in the store, and this is the first way you can get this tank. It comes as a bundle package along with the Lanson C. Now, the Lanson C is a tier 8 medium, whereas the Emil 51 is a tier 8 heavy. With this bundle, which is going to cost you 15,000 gold, you're getting two very, very good tanks. You're getting two legendary camos, one for each tank. You're getting a load of times five boosters. You're getting all the equipment unlocked and you get two garage slots. And you also get some strange jumping thingy avatar. This is not a bad bundle. I mean, 15,000 for two tanks, that's 7,500 each tank with all the equipment and the legendary camos unlocked. So that's not too bad, but you need to obviously have a spare 15,000 gold hanging around. There is another way you can get old of the Emil 51, however, and we're going to look at that right now. So if you don't have a spare 15,000 gold just hanging around and you've got about 8,500 to 9,000, you can still get the Emil 1951. However, this one's going to cost you a bit more. With the package, it's basically 7,500 each tank, and that's got everything unlocked. This one, well, you don't get the legendary camo. You don't get the funky avatar. You don't get the boosters and you don't get the equipment unlocked. You just get the tank and the garage slot for 8,500, which is basically an extra thousand gold. Now, Wargaming do this a lot. They want you to buy the double bundle rather than the tank individually. Now, that's a call you've got to make. Personally, if you've got a spare 15,000 gold, you could do worse because these both those tanks are really good. I love the Emil 51. In fact, I play the Emil 51 more than I play the Emil 1, the Tech Tree version. Why? Well, there's a reason for that too, and I'll get to that in a moment. And then you've got the Lanson. I mean, the Lanson is also a pretty, pretty funky little medium tank in Tier 8. So they're worth the look. Now, let's have a look at why I prefer this one over the Emil 1. So this is the Emil 1, the tech tree version of the, the same tank, effectively. And there are some subtle differences. Now let's assume that we've got all the same equipment on these tanks. That is calibrated shells, enhanced gun laying device, um, enhanced armor, and vert stab. Well, the DPM on the 51 is slightly better. Okay, it's 2008 compared to 2005 on the Emil 1. The penetration is better. The Emil 51 will dish out 242 millimeters of pen. This Emil 1, however, will only dish out 228. The Emil 1 does have better alpha damage, 320, compared to the 51, which only has 310. The Emil 51 has a better reload. It has a better rate of fire because of that better reload. I mean, admittedly, you've got the Emil 1, which has 22.73 seconds of the full reload of the magazine, whereas the Emil 1951 will reload that magazine in 21.79 seconds, almost a second difference. That means the rate of fire goes up. Both tanks are autoloaders. Both tanks have three shells. Both tanks have a three second interclip reload between each shell. They both have the same caliber. They both have the same velocity. They both have the same aim time. They both have the same dispersion. Whilst both have the same gun depression, the Emil 1, the Tech 3 version, has slightly better elevation. The Emil 1951 is also faster by five kilometers than that of its Tech 3 counterpart. But don't, don't forget, the Tech 3 counterpart comes with that super duper speed boost, whereas the Emil 51 only comes with the normal speed boost. So you can get some decent uh, speed going out there when you need to. Camo rating, well, on the well, well stationary, the Emil 1 has 12%. This The Emil 51 only has 11%. But aside from that, all the other camo ratings are the same. Credit co-efficiency, the Emil 1951 is 175%. Compared to this tank, it only 97%. However, this tank has better armor. It really does. 
I mean, on the turret of the Emil 1951, you've got 166 frontally. This has 187 frontally. On the sides and on the rear, this tank, the Emil one, has 73 and 52 respectively. The 51 has 36 and 21. Hull armour, where well again, the Emil one tops it. It has 130 on the front, 83 and 52 on the rear, on the sides and rear, respectively. Whereas the 51 has 104 at the front, 36 and 31 sides and rear. Ha! Ah, but the win rate in the 51 is a whopping 57% compared to the 54% of the Emil 1. Thing is, more players play the Emil 1 than they do the Emil 1951. And this one has a slightly better survival rate. Aside from that, it doesn't have better average damage, it doesn't have a better damage ratio, it doesn't have better average kills, and it doesn't have a better kills to death ratio. These things are to be considered. But anyway, let's jump into a game and let's see what all the fuss is about. Why do I like the Emil 1951? So here we are rolling out on Alpenstadt in the Emil 1951. Now, I've always been a big fan of this tank. In fact, I play this tank more than I play the Emil 1, which is the Tech Tree version. Why? Well, I just seem to like this tank a little bit better. I think that extra DPM, that extra mobility, just helps it out. Don't get me wrong, it's got the same camo profile. It's got the same armor profile in real terms. It's a haul down beast with a really stonkingly hard as nails turret. Okay, it doesn't dish out the same I end alpha. I mean, this one's 310, the tech tree is 320. But it doesn't matter because this has got a better reload. This has got better DPM. You are getting basically a lot more damage coming out of this gun in a shorter time than you do with the Emil 1 in real terms. Not only that, it just seems to be that little bit quicker. Okay, it doesn't come with the super duper speed boost like the Emil 1 does, but the speed boost on this one is, is adequate enough. And we are really, you know, just holding our own here, able to snipe whilst on the front line, so to speak. We've already dished out 920 damage, and we're a minute, you know, we're coming up to the two minute mark in the game. Now, the thing I like about this tank is that it is relatively noob friendly, especially for a premium tank. I mean, okay, I get smacked there from the Tiger, but the thing is I'm now not hauled down, and the bottom plate on this tank is pretty much wide open. And you are vulnerable on that longish reload. I mean, it is only 20 odd seconds, but it's 20 odd seconds of vulnerability. And if anybody rushes you, you're going to get hurt. But I find the gun pretty accurate. I find the gun very, very forgiving. You can stick this thing quite far away from the battle, to be honest with you. Well, I recommend you don't because it is a front line tank, realistically, although second line moreover because you can get out a lot of damage. We're now at 2,128. It's, there's two against four here. And we're on our reload, but there we go. There's a uh, Tankenstein, or there was a Tankenstein. And there's the SMC. We've got to be careful with, it, with him. Don't forget the penetration on this tank is slightly better than the Tech Tree version. So you are going to slice through some of these tanks pretty much with ease. The other thing is, the 51... Well, and then again, so is the Emil one. Both of those tanks are pretty comfy, even facing off against the tier nines out there. So it's not like this is a one hit pony. You, you know, you're not just gonna do well in tier seven, tier eight battles. You actually are gonna do well if you play it correctly in tier nine also. That's why I like this tank. Now, you may be wondering, why am I not reloading here? I mean, I've got a full HP SM, SMV there. Well, I'm not reloading because I want to try and track him and then hide behind this building if I can. Sort of sucker him round, so to speak. And you can do that with this tank. You can get good track shots. You are pretty accurate with the gun. I mean, it's a lovely gun. It really is. Now we're on two against one. We're over 3k damage. Okay, poor little tiger behind me. He's going to have a struggle because he is a one shot and he is a tier seven. And uh, the SMC, the SMV, sorry. I think he's the single shot 
and he takes down the tiger. That's going to allow me to just come in with my three second into shell reload. Boom, down he goes. We do just shy of 4k damage. And that is what this tank is capable of doing almost every battle. It is able to put a lot of damage down very, very quickly, to be fair. And nicely, we get a first class for our troubles. That was a ratings battle. And I'm happy with that because I'm always happy when I grow, when I roll out in the Emil 51. It's a beautiful, beautiful tank. You can see there, we take three kills. We do just shy of 4K and we had a good time. But let's have a look at another replay. So here we are rolling out on dead rail. And I forewarn you, this one's a little bit of a heartbreaker to an extent. Now the Emil, as I said, is a good haul down beastie. It's got great gun depression. It's got an incredibly accurate gun and it's got a stonkingly rock solidly hard turret. So you can take positions like this on maps like this and basically snipe the enemy. And that's one of the tricks of the book in this tank. Now this is a tier nine game. And as I said in the last replay, this tank doesn't really struggle. Okay, that was just a bad shot by me. That was not the tank, that was me. There you go, next shot goes straight in. This tank doesn't struggle against tier nines. Not really, not if you know where to pen them. It has enough, you know, oomph in that shell velocity and with that penetration to, to sort of give you some comfort when you're in these bigger games. Now here comes a 252U and look at that. I mean, we can easily get into his bottom plate without breaking a sweat and down he goes. 1200 damage dished out and we've already taken a kill. Now there's a motion there. Okay, we've got to be pretty careful with him because he is a little bit tougher to pen. And I'm going to have to probably load up the premium ammunition to smack him a bit more than I would normally. But that's not to say you can't have, you know, a good roll against tanks like the Maotian. Because you can. You know, it's not an impossible tank to pen, not in this little tier 8 heavy. And when you go side on like that, you're pretty easy to pen. And, you know, maybe we get the cheek. No, unfortunately, that was just a bad aim by me. And trying to get this gun to work in the bottom plate. And there we go. We break his tracks. So... The Emil 51, as I say, doesn't have a problem against the bigger tier 9s. Now, that motion realistically should be rushing me, should be closing down the angles, knowing that it's going to be a lot harder for me to pen his turret unless I load premium ammunition. Plus, I've got a long reload. So, you know, the, the motion player there is being a little bit passive, a little bit tentative. And that's allowing me to farm him to an extent. Okay, that was just a bad shot by me. Trying to get his bottom plate and actually get his tracks instead. But we farmed him for quite a lot, almost half his hit points. And again, he's just not rushing onto me, which is exactly what he should be doing. That's what he should do. I don't blame him. You know, he's probably, you know, a bit cautious because I've got tanks behind me. And he is worried that I'm going to be able to pen him, as I said, in his cheek. But if he keeps turning on side like that, then I haven't got a problem with him. <laughs> Track him again. Can we finish him off with this shell? Yes, we can. That's a tier 9 and a big, hefty tier 9 at that. So, so far we've done 2,700 damage. We've taken two kills, one of which has been a tier 9. And we've had a pretty good time. We've lost a little bit of hit points, but nothing to write home about and certainly nothing to worry about. We're just going to reload as we push up onto this tiger. Oh, we get smacked from behind by every man and his dog. We've now got all our hit points gone. We've got to make sure we don't bang into the tiger because we're going to die. But we take him out. 3,264. Now, as I said, this one's a little bit of a heartbreaker. And it's a heartbreaker because, unfortunately, one of my big tanks in the tier 8 is sat at the back of the map. Now, okay, he's a TD, so I understand that. Oh, there's the Ritter. Can we stick one into him? Yes, we can. 341. He's got the spore liner. Clever player. Hence the reason why we're... There is the, uh, the T28 defender doing his best to do nothing, really. He's farming. Okay, he's a TD, and you can't really blame him. TDs do stuff like that. Now, here comes the Ritter. I'm on 49 hit points, so I don't really... You know, I, I, I'm not going to last much longer. 3,700. Can we get round and... Get the Ritter down. Yes, we can. Admittedly, the T28 did help there. Now we're up to 3,800. We've taken four kills. It's three against two. 
the Batchat Boresk there is a one shot. Uh, unfortunately, though, there's a Borsig who is not. And I think there's also uh, another heavy out there that's pretty, pretty healthy. Although I can't remember, to be honest with you. So we're just holding a line here. We can't attack anybody. We can't push anybody, not with 49 hit points and not in the position that we're in. The thing is, we have got a full HP T28 defender there. He is full HP. And I'm asking for assistance because I know eventually someone's going to rush me. I'm going to reload. I'm telling the T28 to move. He's going to tell me no. He's going to stay where he is. There you go. And they, what, what, what can I say? I mean, I'm telling you, you've got all your HP, man. You know, get a move. I, I can't spot anything. I can't push anybody. I can't do anything at all. Yet the T28 is determined that he ain't going to move or budge an inch. Not much you can do about that, unfortunately. So, you know, that, this is why these games are heartbreakers, yeah? Because these type of things happen in game. Oh, he's finally moved. There we go. So maybe we can poke up now and hopefully that chieftain is going to come round the corner. We can give him a bit of a smacky. Yes, we can. Take kill number five. 3,904. Unfortunately, I'm spotted. Every man and his dog now knows where I am. And here comes the Borsig as I expected. And I, I expected him a long time ago, to be fair. But I get taken out by the bat chap Buresk, who, by the way, is a one-shot and has been a one-shot. So it was pretty annoying, mainly because the T28 decided not to help me. He decided to sit there with all his HP and effectively not do much. Now, OK, I get the fact that he was basically farming. But if he would have pushed on this bat chat a lot sooner, then we had... You saw the Chieftain was a one-shot. The Bat Chat's a one-shot. He's got three shells in the clip. Okay, the Borsig then would have been the only thing left. But he decided that he wasn't going to move. And the thing is, he plays this tank particularly well. Look at that. He's got a 50 ranking. And it's just disappointing when games go like that. And I, I appreciate he was basically looking to farm. I understand that. He's a TD. But when you're in a two versus three scenario towards the end of the game, there's only seconds remaining. You know, you need to push a little bit, okay? You need to, you know, make use of your HP. Never, nevertheless, I'm not unhappy with that game. Nine, you know, 3,984, we get a well-deserved mastery, mainly because we got five kills. So I'm overly, you know, I'm happy with that game. And as I said, this is what you can do in the Emil 51. And, you know, that's why I like the tank. You can do that. You can see there the defender did farm a little bit. He didn't take any kills, but he farmed a little bit. That has been the Emil 1951, a tank that is currently in the store and I think is a pretty good bargain, especially if you get the two together at 7,500 for each with all the bells and whistles, as I said. Alternatively, I mean, 8,500 for the tank on its own isn't too bad either. Anyway, I've been Fujit. That has been the Emil 1951. And I want to hear your comments and everything below. I think this one is a great little tank and a worthy addition to anybody's garage. And it's well worth a look at the moment, especially with that Lanson C, which is an equally good tank. Anyway, guys, until the next time, stay safe out there. Have fun on the battlefield and happy tanking. Because at the end of the day, that really is what it's all about, isn't it? Having fun and being happy.